Welcome back to Elden Ring the Ultimate Guide. Today it is the Forbidden Lands, which is the middle part between Lindell and the mountaintops of the Giants. And to kick this off, we are going to go to the Volcano Manor, because we are going to buy uh, um, an Ash of War from Bernal, which is uh, going to pop up a few times in the latter quarter of the game. And that is um, Assassin's Gambit, I think that was the name. Yeah, that's right. So Assassin's Gambit works by... Um, makes you partially invisible and reduces all sound that you make, so it massively lowers the detection range for all enemies. And you're going to see it debuted here immediately, because we're going to take the shortcut down to get back to the path to the Forbidden Lands as quickly as we can. So this is the shortcut that will take you past the Crucible Knight. Um, but you'll get a demonstration right here, because we'll pop Assassin's Gambit, and then you'll see how effective it is at reducing enemy detection because you can quite literally sprint around behind him and he doesn't know you're there. So we'll use that to get past the misbegotten and the perfumers and such because no sense fighting them since we already have. Anytime it runs out, just refresh it and you will not get pursued by anything so long as you hug the fence. It's very, very useful and it comes in uh, comes in handy more than once, which yeah. means it's definitely um... worth the pickup. There's probably times earlier in the guide when Assassin's Gambit could have been used quite effectively to avoid certain encounters, but otherwise, uh, as I should probably mention, if this is the first time you've watched any of these guides, then we recommend you watch the video linked in the description below. And if you've got any tips of your own for this area, then by all means stick them in the pinned tips comment, and that way we can all contribute to the guide and people can look over them as well. But otherwise, now we are heading towards uh, the Forbidden Lands. And... Um, I think we picked up the uh, the Flame Drake Talisman plus one um, just there. And we're just using Lion's Claw. Uh, Lion's Claw, very, very effective on horsed enemies for whatever reason. Um, aside from the Black Riders, I don't, I don't know what the deal is there. But uh, yeah, you just like, you stagger things so heavily with Lion's Claw when they're on a horse, it's, it's kind of wild. Like you've said on several occasions, Lion's Claw is the best hit in the game. Like, for a <laughs> yeah. single hit, it is just your best option all round. Picking up an immunizing white cured meat there. There's a strange scarab over on this side of the bridge, but we fought all three variants of Landell enemies just there. We fought the Landell foot soldiers, the soldiers, and the knight. The one on the horse. Why does he get big? Who knows? Um, yeah, who fucking knows? I'm so, not yeah, here the, to reason why. The Lindell soldiers can drop the, the Helm, the Circle, the Gauntlets, the Greaves, Lord Sworn Straight Sword, War Picks, Heavy Crossbows, the Lord Sworn Shield, and the Brass Shield. So basically, whatever they're holding. The Foot Soldiers can drop the Gilded Foot Soldiers Cap, the Leather Draped Tabard, and they can drop Daggers, Short Swords, Short Spears, and the Soldiers Crossbow. And then the Knights can drop the Helm, the Armour, the Gauntlets, the Greaves, the Knights Great Sword, the Partisan, the Great Bow, or the Golden Great Shield. So again, the stuff that they're wielding. But yeah, heading along to this uh, big lift area thing, and what we're going to do first is l ride it down to the bottom and then grab the grace before we do the, uh, oh, what do you call it, the Divine Tower section of this part of the game. Yeah, it makes sense to do it this way because it saves one journey if you do it this way around. Yes. So if you come uh, to the bottom, you get the grace, you then take the uh, lift all the way up, you do the divine tower section by sending the lift back down, so then you can grab the stuff from the little room on the way up the lift um, very briefly and then just walk back to the grace. It saves you one, one journey up or down the lift. So for some reason, you you get like a strange boss encounter. I, I don't know why. You fight the Fell Twins, which is just two omens, which is really nothing that... I mean, I'm pretty sure we've fought two omens in one room before. Uh, but... But yeah, Lion's Claw really putting in the work here, because the omens cannot fucking stand up to it. And we've killed one before the other one could even really reach us. Now granted, these things can do a fair chunk of damage, just don't get hit. Lion's Claw will prevent you from getting hit because it'll either flatten them or stagger them. And um, that's it, like this is not a boss that is going to require 
very much thought, and then we get uh, Omen Killer Rolo for that. I'm going to assume uh, that that's probably outclassed by quite a lot of things at this stage. Yeah, you, you're not wrong. I would call Omen Killer Rolo the like final form for the imps, if that makes sense. Except sure. instead of being small and two of him, he's big, tanky, and also inflicts a lot of bleed. But because he's got that strange triple jump attack, um, he can keep enemies staggered for a while, so he's all around not bad. So I forget what rune it is from this tower. It is... This, I think, is Morgoth's rune. It is. So we get Morgoth's great rune. You also get Moog's great rune from that tower, and that's the reason there's a grace right at the top. So that when you do get Moog's rune, you can just walk back to the top and pick it up. I, didn't, I actually didn't realise that you got both from that one. Weird. Yeah. Jumped so, off of this little room, grabbed the yeah. blade of calling in the official's attire, and now walk back. See? Saved a journey. Yeah, so that is the most efficient way of doing this, even though it's such a short area that it doesn't really matter. But now we are going to equip the uh, setup for killing Knight's Cavalries. Now, all this stuff is actually kind of unnecessary because the where you stand you actually can't be hit by the Knight's Cavalry, so you can actually just equip Thunderbolt on a weapon and then nothing else, because the other stuff is actually kind of superfluous, uh, because it's just, he can't hit you from where you stand, and you can just Thunderbolt him to death, so the extra damage isn't really worth the amount of time spent in the menu setting up that extra damage, <laughs> if you can believe. I mean, it wasn't really worth it for us, because we had a guide to record, but if you want it out of the way as quickly as humanly possible, then this is the max damage setup for this. Yes. So that's the, the Dex tier in the flask, the Lightning tier in the flask, the Lightning Scorpion charm, um, and icon yeah, shield. that's that's about it. I mean, the Icon Shield doesn't boost damage, but it will improve your survivability. Now, before tackling this area, uh, and this is just a straight line to the mountaintops of the giants. This is just a kind of intermediate part. Um, also, just quickly before I uh, say anything else, there's like a kind of a, a big skull head. Uh, so you want to head up that hill and then you jump this little gap uh, and then there's Dragon One Grease. But um, yeah, make sure that you set it to night time before coming here. Just remember that. That's important because you need the knight's cavalry spawn during night time. So just save you the like one all the way back. On the way there, we're avoiding Vulgar Militia, but if you were to fight them, they can drop the Vulgar Militia uh, helm, gauntlets, greaves, armor, um, the Vulgar Militia saw, and the Vulgar Militia shotel, depending on which they're wielded. Yes. Now, what you can do is you can jump up onto this rocky part that we're on here, and then, as you can see, there's literally nothing that this thing can even do. Um, it kind of runs about wildly, but we can just, just spam Thunderbolt. And this is this is even better than firing arrows at it, to be honest. Like, look at the chunk of damage it's dealing every time it hits. It is just so good. Eventually, it, it just, it's just given up. Like, it's, it's just accepted as fate. And what's he going to do? Just cry about it. That's all yeah. that's the only option he's got. And that's and it. There you he's go. Nice to have a nice Arabia life. <laughs> it is a bit annoying that it doesn't uh, accurately show just how good the setup is against Knight's Cavalry, but uh, it's it's good. <laughs> if you don't have yeah. Thunderbolt, you just fire arrows into him until he dies. Uh, we were rewarded with Phantom Slash there. That's a Ash of War that can go on likes of pole arms, halberds, and such the like. Um, actually very very good because you can aim the phantom slash uh i'll call it a projectile but it's kind of charitable to call it that you can aim that independently from your direction of movement grabbing a golden seed on the way here so what you can do is you can send the phantom towards an enemy and use the slash portion of it to dodge away it's quite cool very good tool for spacing so, picked up a Sombre 7 there, and now we are heading up the hill, and if we've done Millicent's quest correctly, then you should be able to summon Millicent for this upcoming boss. Although, given the fact that the boss coming up is another Blackblade Kindred, 
probably not worth summoning Millicent. Because uh, giving this thing more health probably isn't really worth it when you can just summon the Mimic Tear anyway. And that'll be enough. So what we're doing is we're just heading straight up the stairs, just avoiding the boss. And we're going to grab the Grace up the top here. That way if he does kill us, we're just going to uh, end up coming here rather than the start of this area. Then we're just going to sit to reset the boss. Uh, and now we, and now also because we've uh, reset, we set our gear for killing the knights' cavalries. This way we can reset our gear back to um, just you know the, the kind of baseline. At this point, I would be tempted personally to swap out uh, probably the health regen tier for the stamina regen one because the stamina regen just gives you more actions per minute, so to speak. Um, so it means. You you can swing more often. You it effect, effectively equates to higher DPS. So I so. personally disagree with that, but that's that's is fair enough. So we're we are not summoning the mimic for this one because we've already in the last episode, like literally ten minutes worth of guide, shown you what the mimic can do against the Black Blade Kindred. So what we're gonna show you is Tish against the Black Blade Kindred and how uh, how good Tish's ability for health drain is against bosses. Um, just look at that. Once Tish does that little uh, swipe, that little uh, projectile attack, Tish is uh, certainly uh, squishy, but damn the amount of damage that Tish can put out is really impressive. Yeah, so as you can see there, there was a big chunk of grey at the end of the health bar, that's because Tish, when she hits with Destin Death, which is what the projectile is dealing, it just immediately knocks 10% of the boss's HP off, and the effect does linger if she hits multiple times. She hit three consecutively there, so it was absolutely melting that enemy. And then for that we get the Gargoyle's Black Blade and the Gargoyle's Black Axe. Now, in addition uh, to that, uh, having your shield up for that boss is pretty effective. Um, Locked a, a good few hits there, but otherwise, it is just another gargoyle boss, and gargoyles are weak. Uh, but gargoyles are weak to damage, if you can believe, so just kind of get your hits in the Lion's Claw. A gay for games classic. Um, yes. The Black Blade and the Black Axe, by the way. The Black Blade's fine, and the Axe is terrible. Honestly, just don't use them. So, we... Because we have both halves of the rolled medallion at this point, uh, we are able to hoist the medallion up at the bottom of the lift, and then that takes us up to here, the mountaintops of the giants. And now we are just going to head to the grace. Uh, we, oh, there we go. I did pick up the map, fra map fragment. Cool. And then the grace is here, and then also Shabriri is here. Now, depending on what you want to do, uh, it depends on what your action should be. So if you want to um, do the madness ending, then not killing Shibriri just now is suggested. If you don't give a shit about the madness ending, then killing Shibriri right now is perfectly fine, because the only thing you get is if you... You can get Shibriri as a summon if... I, th I think only if you've done... That you've, you've got the madness setting... That, sorry, the madness ending set up. But if you're not going to do that, then you can't get him as a summon, so you might as well just kill him. And get his equipment to know because it literally doesn't matter but otherwise that is it for the forbidden lands and okay there we go that's forbidden lands done join us in part 37 where we're going to be doing mountaintops of the giants now other than liking and subscribing you can follow us on twitter you can also follow us on twitch where we will be streaming once the dlc is out and if you're feeling especially generous you can sling us some cash on patreon if you're so inclined but the best thing you can do is just comment anything just comment anything go on Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.